Good morning, everyone, and uh, welcome to our second coffee tasting here at DevConf. Um, I'm joined today by Teresa from Double Shot. Good morning, Teresa. Good morning, everyone. And today we're going to be brewing, brewing the Imbachi coffee, if you're playing along with our coffee kit, but use any coffee you've got, and that would be great. Um, we'd love to have your questions. Teresa is interested in questions around coffee, brewing techniques, and things like this, so please put those in the Q&A, and I'll pass them along to her verbally. Um, also, yesterday, some people had asked about some alternative brewing techniques. Uh, yesterday, we saw the Clever Dripper. And so today, Teresa has prepared some stuff with AeroPress with us. But I think she's ready to talk about pretty much any brewing technique that typically occurs with hand coffee. Um, and with that, Teresa, can you tell us some about this coffee? Where does it come from? Uh, great. Thank you. <clears throat> Once again, uh, welcome here in our cafe. My name is Teresa and I'm responsible for education in Double Shot Roastery. So whatever question you have, shoot, and I would love to uh, answer all of them. So today's coffee we prepared for you, <clears throat> it's uh, called Imbachi. Uh, the Imbachi is the name of the family which lives in Colombia. So it's our Colombian farmer uh, and um, this is the one of the farmers we are cooperating with uh, for the longest time, for so almost for 10 years. Uh, until today, we have every fresh crop of this farmer. Uh, the, we used to call this coffee, coffee Carlos Imbachi by the father of the family, but right now he has uh, two or three daughters and sons, so now it's just the name of the whole family. So, as you noticed, you have some description of the coffee here uh, under, the, under the name. There's a set plums, sugarcane, and uh, lemongrass. I will go uh, for that a little bit later. What does it mean and how does it uh, get there in uh, the taste? Because it's not the artificial taste, it's the natural taste of the coffee. But at first, I would love to talk about AeroPress because I heard that you requested to, to see uh, one of these methods. Um, but after that, uh, if you want, uh, we can also follow with, uh, for example, V60 or French press or whatever you choose. So uh, for every filter coffee, what we need is uh, hot water. Definitely the water shouldn't be boiling, but near to boiling. So I have uh, my set on 96 degrees of Celsius. Uh, then we have need some uh, freshly grounded coffee. Uh, I pre-grounded my coffee because I didn't want to disturb us with the sound of the grinder. And uh, for especially for air press, we need uh, paper, paper filters. So for those of you who are not familiar with this uh, equipment, it's a really clever one for, uh, for traveling, for example, because it's light and you can stock it in your backpack and uh, do it whenever you are. It has three parts. So it has this uh, part where the paper filter is sitting. So there are paper filters which are original to the AeroPress. So if you bought the AeroPress, you had your filters already uh, there. You put the paper filter uh, on the bottom. And as with every other filter method, you need to rinse the filter first because we want to get rid of this paper taste in the filter. Then we have this um, middle part where we put the filter afterward. We put the coffee inside, pour hot water, and then we use this plunger, or how to say it, uh, which we put on the top and we gently press it. So that's the reason why we call it AeroPress. So at first I will rinse the filter with the hot water. Don't forget to get rid of this water to not uh, dilute it your uh, coffee. Then we put there grounded coffee. About the grind size, it should be some like mildly coarse, not too fine, like a powder, but not too coarse, like the like scent or something like that. So it's somewhere in the middle. <laughs> Uh, about the recipe, for all filter methods, there is a universal recipe which calls for 60 grams of coffee per one liter of water. Because here we are limited by the size of the AeroPress, there is a quite a um, stable recipe I'm using that's uh, 
15 grams of coffee per 250 grams of water. So I put the, all the uh, arapes with this uh, with this special um, glass kettle on the bottom, or you can use uh, some solid solid mug because we will pressing hard on it. So do not use something really fragile. This is the special one, special glass one, but I would recommend you to use a normal mug or uh, if you are somewhere outside, uh, this kind of metal metal mugs. So I put the coffee there. Then I'll follow with the water and it's good to pour just a little bit of water, start your stopwatch and gently stir. This phase we call uh, pre-infusion. This is the moment where the gases which are into in like locked in the um, uh, roasted uh, beans, uh, mainly CO2, uh, carbon dioxide, it's locked in the in the beans, and we want them a little bit to get out to the gas, so uh, we will get we will achieve much more rich flavor. So we let that sit uh, just a little bit of water for 30 seconds, and after 30 seconds we follow with the rest of the water. So I put there 15 grams of coffee. Now I'm filling it with 250 grams of water. I will give it just a little stir again. And then I will put there the, the plunger and I will try to maintain the under pressure. So I will put it there and slightly pulling it up. So that creates under pressure here, and that means that it will stop the dripping of the coffee. So as you can see, a little bit of coffee went down, but not all of it. If I wouldn't, if I wouldn't uh, close it properly and didn't do this under pressure, the most of the coffee brew will, would go uh, down without proper extraction. So we want to a little bit prolong the time of contact of the coffee and the water, and after two, two and a half minutes, we want to gently press it down to, uh, to filter the coffee. So for the filtering, for the pressing time, we'll put it from the scale away. Now we are waiting. So the contact time of the water and the coffee depends on the grind size of the coffee. So as as uh, finer you grind the coffee, then, then shorter the time of the contact of the coffee and the water. Uh, if you grind oppositely the, your coffee to coarse, or if you, uh, for example, get some gift where, uh, of the back of the coffee, which is already pre-grinded, uh, and you see that the grind size is too coarse, then you just let it sit down there for more than a two and a half minutes. So for example, three or four minutes. So now it's two and a half minutes for me, for my grind size, and I will now just gently pressing it down. So this is why this is called aeropress, because there is this small amount of air and we are pressing with it. But do not have the idea that it is some kind of same like uh, with espresso machine, because the pressure you are making is not significantly bigger than one bar of the uh, of the atmospheric pressure. So comparing with espresso machine, there you have a pressure of nine bars, which is uh, produced with the with the rotational pump. So this is nothing like espresso, but it's a clever way how to filter your coffee. So after pressing all the water down you have a nice cup of coffee. So one question that came in while you were doing this was, uh, mm -hmm. because the AeroPress is so small, do you have any suggestions mm -hmm. about people who need to brew more than one cup at a time, like for them and mm -hmm. their partner? 
So there is some possibilities how to do that. Uh, one thing is to do what we call bypass. That means that, for example, you put in the Aeropress uh, more coffee, for example, 30 grams of coffee. You fill it with the water as much as you well, as you need. And then you, uh, after that, you will dilute it with the hot water. So you will do something like the Americano. But I'm not really a big fan of that. I think that the taste is not that rich that it could be. So if you need uh, more coffee, the one possibility I would choose is to uh, brew it again. Just do it another another set of the, your coffee. Or uh, if you have a bigger party, obviously there is a, some better uh, ways how to brew your coffee. For example, in, in V60, where you can do uh, at uh, least half a liter of coffee at once or use some uh, electrical uh, filter method. But as far as you are stuck with the with the arrow press, I would suggest just do one more round and uh, do the coffee again uh, if you if you want to do m more than one cup of coffee. This is I think this is the one disadvantage which uh, uh, arrow press has that it's too small. So, um, given that piece of advice, would you suggest that you make your own cup of coffee? Make your partner's cup of coffee first. You know, it's <laughs> a life it's a life lesson here. <laughs> Oh, it depends. When I do the coffee for my partner, we usually share one cup and then we do it, do it again. Oh, so, that's clever. Or it depends on the, on the emergency situation. <laughs> that's clever. I like that. <laughs> um, somebody else has asked okay. uh, if you can talk a little about the difference in taste expectations or how the coffee is going to taste mm -hmm. coming through, say, an AeroPress versus uh, the French press. Mm -hmm. That's a good question. So basically, main difference between the Iro press and the French press is that in Iro press we are using this paper filter. This is what will do the most um, uh, like tasteable uh, difference. Uh, uh, in contrary. Ah. Sorry. <laughs> so in contrary, in uh, French press, you had this metal filter. So through the metal filter, always uh, get some this small uh, smallest particles. The fines you are um, when we are grinding, there is a all, all time some fines particles which will go through the metal filter. Uh, that means that your coffee from French press will be a little bit like dirty. It wouldn't look like uh, the Arrow press we just saw, where there is a clear um, yeah, from coffee. Uh, this means just a disadvantage in the in a, like of uh, in from the point of view like um, uh, the visibility is, is uh, different. But if you taste it. Uh, in French press, the, the taste will be much richer, sweeter, and almost like a little bit too too bitter for someone because there are these small particles. But contrary to that, the Aeropress and all the other methods which using paper filter, the taste will be clearer and with a higher acidity and uh, um, also a little bit um, not so heavy body. So from, from French press, we call uh, this, this perception on your tongue that it have heavy body because it's really full of these small particles. Uh, but the arrow press will be a little bit clearer and lighter. This is mostly, it depends on your taste. So someone would prefer French press because it has this richer taste and, uh, and can achieve also the taste of a sweetness, higher sweetness and higher uh, bitterness. Um, but the Aeropress will be a little bit more acidic and it depends what do you like. Okay. And so it seems like what you're saying as well is then that I would expect um, a similar set of tastes and notes from say the Aeropress and the V60 because they're both using um, a, a paper filter. Yeah. Okay. That makes sense. But the V60 is a continuously dripping method mm -hmm. of brewing. So it's not That's immersion, cool. I guess. Okay. Yeah, definitely there is also this, this question about, uh, we call it, the, so the V60 is from the, uh, it's, it's the part of the brewing method we called, as you said, um, uh, pour over, mm -hmm. which are constantly dripping through, but the Aeropress and French press is what we call full immersion because there is all the time, all the particles are, are immersed in the water. So that means that this is slightly heavier body from the full immersion method uh and 
even clearer and even lighter body from a pullover method. So if we would uh, say, let's say that this would be like a heavier body, uh, most um, uh, sweet and bitter taste, this will be something in the middle and V60 will, will be a little bit clearer and uh, more clear, sorry. <laughs> and uh, with a little bit uh, enhanced acidity compared to uh, Arabes and the French press. But basically uh, the taste wouldn't, shouldn't be like too different. Uh, still you should get these notes of sugarcane and plums and, uh, and lemongrass in all of them, just the intensity Will be different. Okay, that makes sense. Um, we also have a question around pre infusion. Um, and uh, they write mm -hmm. pre infusion methods are usually seen with pour overs. I, I assume they're talking about like the mm -hmm. V60. What is the benefit of pre infusing for immersion um, style like the, the AeroPress or a French press? Basically, it's not that important. The pre infusion I did, I did um, because I have really fresh coffee uh, roasted just two days before. So there is this problem of the CO2, uh, which basically like pressing against the water. So just water can't go so much into the molecules of the coffee uh, such easily uh, comparing to when it's a little bit degassed. So if you have a really, really fresh coffee one, two days after roasting, then I would go for a pre-infusion even for the full immersion coffee. But you have uh, a point that uh, it's not that much important compared to um, pour over. In pour overs, we definitely want to pre-infusion every time. This is mainly because, as you can see, this is the conic um, pattern of the of the V60. That if you pour water over the grounds, it will get the water will get on the bottom uh, not so easily like in the well, if you if you pour all the water into the this um, uh, this shape of the of the brewer. So definitely, if you have a pour over method you want to help the water to get to the bottom as fast as is possible. Also the pre-infusion is the uh, way how to, uh, as I said, to get the water to all the particles at the same time. So, the, so, so the, all the particles will uh, open in the same time and will, will extract uh, same, same time. <laughs> okay, that, that makes sense. Um, it sounds like mm -hmm. the pre-infusion then is important, especially because the AeroPress is so small. Whereas maybe mm -hmm. maybe on something like a French press where you've got a liter of water, it's yeah. less important because Definitely. there's so much water moving around. Okay. Um, one of the things we had talked about in the in the pregame of this session, uh, and you had referenced earlier, was these words at the bottom: plums, sugarcane, and lemongrass. And I'd asked you, where do these words come from? Like, did the Mbachi family suggest them? Did you all do something magical to come up with them? Do you have a random word generator? <laughs> Okay, so who does this magical thing is actually microbes. So the taste of the coffee mainly uh, like consists from few things. One is uh, what we call the the terroir. So the there is a way that there is a thing that uh, where the coffee grows on which type of soil and how attitude and how much rain and how much uh, sunlight there was during the season that uh, makes some part of the taste. Then is the um, uh, the type of variety. So for example, here you can read Katura. Katura is the one of the variety of Arabica. Uh, and then there is a, a really important thing and it's the method of processing. So we have a um, washed processing uh, written here. That means that after picking the cherries of the coffee, you put them uh, to the depulper so it will scratch the skin out of the cherry. You will get rid of the skin and you have the beans covered by this uh, pulp, uh, sugar pulp. Then you will leave it in, um, in uh, some water tanks for, for example, from 24 to 48 hours. And during this time, there is the, this process of um, fermentation. And it depends if the fermentation is underwater with uh, less of oxygen or, it's, uh, or 
there's another method, uh, natural process, where you uh, do not use water and l just l let the cherries uh, sun dry. So if it's happening on the uh, on the sun and on the, in the air, there's another part of uh, another type of uh, fermentation, another type of microbes and yeast is uh, involving in the process. And this yeast and microbes during the uh, fermentation uh, will process the sugars in the in a pulp and after that it will result in another taste of the coffee so if we after that after this um, this uh, scratching of the pulp then le letting it ferment in the wa underwater then drying and then sending to the roastery in the roastery when we uh, roasted the coffee we uh, tasted it uh, it's called cupping so we cup it cup it cup it <laughs> and uh, after that we like a team in a roastery uh, just uh, um, decide what to write here so this is not like uh, also it could be a little bit different if same coffee will uh, roast another roaster will uh, follow another type of, uh, of a roasting process then the, the resulting taste will be uh, different so it can happen that from the same farmer two different roasters would have uh, another descriptor. So we call this descriptors. And this has, these are natural uh, ways how the coffee should taste. Uh, if you taste it regularly and if you taste it uh, with someone who, who can follow this taste, you can learn it. It's not something you have to be like born for. Uh, as more you taste, as more okay. you can feel that it. That makes there. a lot of sense. Um, drive. Yeah, no, it actually. I did. hope so. <laughs> Honestly, it's one of the better explanations of that whole process that I've ever had. So I really appreciate that a lot. Um, Thank you. I, there's <laughs> been some more questions that have uh, come up around brewing methods, and I wanted to drive back towards brewing. Um, somebody was asking specifically mm -hmm. what's your coffee to water ratio for V60, but also uh, your recommended ratio. But also, how does that change for different kinds of brewing methods, or is the ratio relatively fixed? Uh, I would say that I would fix the the brew ratio for all uh, alternative methods. So let's say we have some brew ratio for espresso and everything else, every brewing method, uh, uh, and doesn't matter really if it's the full immersion or if it's a pour over, I would uh, recommend to stuck with the same 60 grams per one liter of water. This is what we called golden standard. It was established in 60s and then later again in 90s, there was two big um, uh, how to say it um, like part of tasting and it was established that this is the the best ratio which which uh, people like to to taste not just the pro um, professional who prepare the coffee but uh, like a general public so I would stuck with the same ratio for everything and I would just uh, count it how much of the coffee I would like to prepare and definitely it will it will result in another taste if you add or if you um, uh, decrease the amount of the coffee as more coffee you use per same amount of the water the, co the taste will be somehow stronger but there is the trick that that uh, you can uh, you can dilute the amount of the coffee in just some part of the water. So if if you have some part of water and the coffee, and if you are increasing the, the amount of the coffee, there won't be enough of water to dilute it. So basically, if, for example, you are using, let's say that my, my uh, it was 15 to 20, uh, 250, and if I would put there... Uh, as I suggested for this bypass, 30 grams of coffee, I would, I would uh, be afraid that it won't dilute it enough and that you are just wasting your coffee and uh, the, the, the taste of the coffee won't be better, of the brew. Uh, it would be just... It wouldn't, um, it wouldn't be stronger really because thick. there's not <laughs> enough water to pull the taste out of the coffee. It actually paradoxically yeah, be weaker. Exactly. Okay. Um, and you're saying 60 yeah. grams per liter of coffee. Okay, yeah, so 15 to 250 mm -hmm. becomes, sorry. It's, I've only had one cup this morning, so I was unable to do that math quickly in my head without <laughs> talking through it out loud. Uh, 
Okay, this is my good. second, so I'm okay. Um, well, we're coming up on the end of our time here, so I'll, I'll ask you two quick questions, which hopefully uh, will be easy to answer. The first is, um, there's been some conversation around reusable filters and the AeroPress, um, and I presume reusable filters and some other methods. Mm -hmm. Do you have an opinion on reusable filters at all? Good, bad? We were just... We were tested two types. One was made of cloth, uh, and second one was made from um, a metal filter. And I actually I had a better result with the metal filter, but it was really special one, which was two layers on the top. So the the result was almost the same like um, uh, from the paper filter. So I would recommend this. Uh, I'm I'm not sure about the brand who is making it, but it was some Japanese uh, factory who produced this kind of filter. It was like the, the two layers of the metal filter connected with uh, some some metal rim, and I would uh, suggest it to use it if you are really considered with the with the zero waste. Uh, but on the other hand, the paper filters you can also put it, you can compost it, you can put put it uh, to your okay, yeah, to your composting compost, bin. No, that makes same. sense. <laughs> compost <laughs> is the correct word. Um, and then the last question, and then we'll we'll say adieu and let everyone go to the next sessions and finish their coffee. Is when you get up in the morning, what is your brewing method? Uh, I'm usually I was used to brew the V60. And actually, this is my favorite coffee from our roastery. So I drink, drink like hundreds of kilos <laughs> of that. Uh, but as far as I'm now stuck uh, in, a, in a home office with my partner, we are uh, brewing on a, on a Mocha Master. This is the electrical filter. So we do like uh, one liter at once and then we drink it okay. uh, through the morning. <laughs> so Very cool. Morning. Very cool. Thank you so much. <laughs> this was fantastic. I really appreciate it. And I hope everyone enjoys the rest of their sessions today at DEF Post your coffee pictures online.